Come on in. Come on, folks. Come on in. This is a great event. If it works. Hi, I'm Bob Shrub, physical therapist. Why don't you tell who you are? I am Jordan Tredenick, a nutrition coach. So today, it's really about Jordan. Um, She's the one with the knowledge today, and she's going to answer questions about gut health and also probiotics and prebiotics. Correct, yes. And uh, we thought we'd start off by, again, come on in. If you haven't come in yet, come on in. Um, if you, uh, I thought we'd start off with Jordan just giving a brief overview of gut health. Or... Sure. Yep. Go now? Sure. Why don't All you right. go? <laughs> Sounds good. So um, just in general terms speaking, um, gut health, the gut microbiome, whatever, however you want to refer to it, um, really is, um, we'll just start basic. So we've got bacteria in our guts. So we've got our small intestines. We've got our large intestines, colon. Um, refer to it as, um, and we've got bacteria living in there. A lot, a lot of bacteria, actually like all of that totaling, I think like four and a half pounds of bacteria, which is crazy. That one. Okay. All right. And, um, so we have the ability to actually influence that bacteria. So what we do, what we eat, the environment we live in, um, all that kind of stuff influences whether we have, um, in simple terms, good bacteria or bad bacteria. And that really will influence, honestly, our overall health in general. So um, the term probiotics, um, that refers to this good bacteria that we can actually feed our gut. Um prebiotics in simple terms is basically food for the probiotics. Okay. Um, is that making sense? Yes. it is. Yes. So yep. the prebiotics that feeds the probiotics that live within our gut microbiome. Um, and like I said, we have the ability as humans with what we do or do not do for that matter, um, to influence how the health of our gut functions. Um, our gut health influences, you know, digestion is the most common one that we think of when we when we think gut health. Um, but it's way more than that. It's our brain health too, which I think we fail to recognize. Um, so, like ninety five percent of our um, serotonin, which is responsible for our mood and things like that, actually lives and is housed in our gut, which I always think is pretty amazing. Um, and then immune health too is a big one that we kind of forget about. Um, you know, we think uh, to boost our immune system, what should we do? Make sure we get lots of vitamin C, make sure our vitamin D levels are optimal. We oftentimes forget about our gut health. So immune health seems to be more of a, you know, popular topic these days. And I think probiotics kind of gets um, pushed along the wayside with that. Well, um, by the way, uh, Jordan, we yeah. are going to take questions on this subject yeah, matter too. Yeah. So go ahead and start sending out, in, uh, out the questions. Um, now the, uh, you were saying, that uh, ninety, what you say? Ninety five percent of like your serotonin, which is serotonin, responsible for right. it's a chemical responsible for you know brain signaling and all. So that. in other words, it, it plays a large whole role in mental health. Hundred percent. Yes. Yep. A lot of um, research being done now on the actual health of your gut being related to your brain health, really. So. So and probably that's why you see quite often when people get upset or they're anxious, Mm -hmm. they have an upset stomach. Right, right. A lot of that connection there. Yep. Sure. Yep. Now, um, you can also, I hear that it can be responsible for weight loss. Yeah, I forgot forgot to even mention that too, and the role that gut health plays in just your overall metabolism. And also, when your gut health isn't functioning properly, um, our body doesn't have the ability so much to tell us that we're full too. So that's another way and role that it can play in weight loss is just to help regulate our appetite. And so we're not overeating as well. So. Now, the problem, as I understood, that to do studies on this, on gut health, is one, like, different nationalities have different gut health. Yep, yep. And then yours, your gut health is constantly changing yes. and evolving. Yep. So it's really hard to compare apples to apples and oranges to oranges because it's constantly changing. Right, right. So I see studies that showed that it was effective in treating, you know, weight loss and studies where it wasn't, <laughs> you know, it's, it's that's nutrition research, though, for yeah. you. I, f- I feel like, in a, in a nutshell, it's, it is hard to isolate for, yeah, those kinds of variables. So what do you do personally? 
What do I do, do you mind personally? If I ask? No, I don't mind at all. Um, I actually um, do take a probiotic supplement. Um, and we can get into that. I'm sure there's going to be questions that pop up on supplementation with it. But um, I do take that. Other than that, are only on days that I don't have some kind of fermented food. So some things that I keep in my refrigerator would be um, raw sauerkraut. Okay? Sure. So that's not the canned stuff. It's got to be the raw refrigerated sauerkraut. Um, I brew kombucha, which is a fermented tea. Um, so if How does that taste, by the way? It tastes... Um, how do I describe it? Um, well, have you ever had apple cider vinegar? Yeah. Okay. So it's like, it's like that, but not quite as strong. And then they usually flavor it with some kind of oh. juice flavoring type, sure. type thing. So, um, but yeah, so I will drink things like that. Um, and if I do have a lot of those fermented foods in my refrigerator, I just skip the probiotic that day, but I sure. keep the probiotic, you know, when I don't have those things. Um, yeah. We got questions. a question came here. Sure. What can I take for my IBS? Good question. Irritable bowel syndrome. Yeah. Yep. Do you, I mean, do you want me to answer this? Yep. You can answer it. Sure. Okay. Um, I mean, irritable bowel syndrome, I feel like that is going to just encompass healing your gut in general. So kind of going off of some of the things I started, what I do, um, you, you have to start not just by like, okay, I'm going to start taking a probiotic supplement to cure this. It really comes down to overall like healthy diet, um, which we can't talk about gut health without talking about eating the clean whole foods diet. Um, Cause all of our um, processed foods and sugars and refined grains and all of that wreak a ton of havoc on our gut and can be sometimes the root cause of IBS. So I think number one, before you would even think about supplementing any probiotic is honestly for IBS cleaning up the diet and getting all the refined um, junk. Yeah. Out of it. I would make a suggestion too, um, just because I had some experience with this myself, not IBS, but I had a very upset stomach yeah. for a long time. And mm -hmm. I went on a FODMAP diet mm -hmm. and so did Mike, who's over here. Um, yeah, there he is. <laughs> F-O-D-M-A-P. Um, and it, I, I read the studies on it. It sounds like that it, it is supposed to help people with IBS also. Yeah, yep, so yep. Um, I would highly recommend it. My daughter went on it and she had good luck with it. Mike had good luck with it. I had good luck with it. So check it out. Yep. Got another question here. Um, what do you think about kombucha without added sugar? Even better yet. Yes. I mean, for sure. Um, that would be something in any commercially prepared or store bought in kombucha, you definitely need to flip it over and look at the ingredients and make sure you're not consuming, you know, 25 grams of sugar in the bottle. Um, cause you're kind of defeating the purpose because sure, exactly. sugar is about the worst offender on our gut health. Yeah. So, um, yeah, there are some good commercially prepared brands out there that have little to no added sugar. So. We got another question. What's the deal with soy? That's Is not that, really a, that's not really yeah. gut health. We're gonna, we're gonna try to stick with gut health. Yeah, because I feel so. like that would uh, take us. I do side. have a question, yeah. by the way. Uh, sure. Um, you know, so with other areas of nutrition, it always seems like it's better to get it from the real food. Yeah. than the supplements. Is that the same here? I'm always a food first type person. Um, like I said, I for probiotics myself, I always try to get the food, like whatever's in my fridge, but I have it available to me. Plus, um, one thing you have to keep in mind with probiotics, though, when it comes from food is we're not getting, um, you know, a ton of strains, right? Because usually um, a certain food or whatever is going to have a couple. But when you can get into the supplementation world, you can get way more strains um, within that product in a higher quantity. So it kind of depends. If you've got a specific health issue you're trying to deal with that relates to your gut health, I personally think a supplementation can be a good idea because you can target specific strains sure. that are for certain issues. But um, for overall general health, I mean, if you can tolerate and you don't mind like some raw fermented foods and kombucha and things like that. I always think that's optimal for sure. What is there a supplement that you would pick if you like, I'm not having troubles with it now. I mean, would, would you have a, would you take a supplement in that case? If you're not having any troubles, right? not, I wouldn't, as long as you're including some kind of fermented food regularly, if I you're don't. not, if you don't at all, then I, I really do feel it's important really? in my, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, now yogurt is a, 
Yeah, that. It, it, as and long as it has the live and active cultures. So how, yeah. what, what, kind, what does that mean? <laughs> I mean, what, what when I go to the store, what is it going to say on it? Yeah, so it actually, um, it needs to say, like, you got to flip it over and actually read and make sure that um, it does, you know, actually state live and active cultures. Because the problem is some of the like, commercial yogurts out on the market, they pasteurize them. And that kills off the probiotics. Oh, and if they don't add them back in, they're dead. So, okay. so yeah, you not all yogurt label. has it. You got to just read. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yep. All right. Mike's got a question here. I've read that some experts say that pro probiotics like Yakult. Never heard of it. Do not even reach the gut and are a waste of money. Is this true? I had read that on some of the supplements. That yeah. They, so yeah. they're, yeah, because I used to work in the supplement industry and there were some supplement manufacturers that started doing some like fancy encapsulation called enteric coating to that they claimed helped to get it to your actually to your colon where you want it to get to mm -hmm. um and that it wouldn't just break down and you know in the right before it got there the stomach but and i don't know there's again it's hard to it's know. mixed it's mixed yeah. research um the trouble that I have with believing that this is just me in my own opinion solely is when you eat food that contains probiotics, I feel like the human's body, the human body is smarter than that and it gets it where it needs to be. But again, I don't, I don't know. The research is mixed on that, but um, if we're talking, if that question was specific to certain supplements, um, not all of them are created equal. That's for sure. Is I there think a, there's some that are garbage. Would but. you like to mention a company that you would trust? Um, for supplements. For supplements? Oh, gosh. Is it that hard? <laughs> kind of, because I just, I can't remember. I've been using, I use the probiotic at the, the gym that I work at now. So. Sure. Um, and that's just a little small thing. So, sure, that's not um, a, a larger. Uh, well, let's get back the, to that. The too. company that, yeah, well, let's get back to that. Yeah. i got to think here. you got a, a question right over Sure. Here. Probiotics with diverticulitis, good or bad idea? Um, I have not seen anything why it would be a bad idea or contrary. Yeah. I would think that would be okay. Um, I don't know. That's a, uh, it loses you with diverticulitis. The, the, the person's not taking in enough fiber and they're, they're creating pouches in their, their Sure. That, that gets infected. I wouldn't think probiotics would have any. Yeah, I don't think it would be negative, too. but I don't know if it would. Yeah, prebiotics, which would are be, often fiber, right? Or fiber, yeah, yeah. So that might be a different story. But probiotics, I would think, would be good. What about the gut and migraines? Is there a connection? And do you recommend mm. anything? You oh. guys are awesome. Good. Gut and migraines. I, that I, I, I don't know. I didn't read anything on no, it. No, I don't. Yeah. It, it would seem just with everything with studied within gut health, I would think there'd be a connection. But I, I really don't know on that one. Sure. I, yeah. What do you think of colostrum to heal the intestinal lining? Is that a gut that biome? Is, or that I mean, is uh, not a probiotic. Colostrum not, is a... Um, oh. oh, That's a bacteria though, isn't it? I know. I'm looking at you like you. Yeah. <laughs> Almost out here. I mean, I know the word. I don't, I don't know. It's the first form of milk produced by the mammary glands of mammals. Oh. It's in milk. It's like in breast milk. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, uh, that I don't know. No. That I, don't, I know it's a supplement. <laughs> you can get it in capsules. Yeah, we don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's a better answer. Breast fluid produced by humans, cows, and other mammals before breast milk is released. It's very nutritious, contains high levels of antibodies, proteins. Mike is trying to inform us right now. <laughs> so, that's what it is. I, I see one here that says that oh, kefir may be protective against cancer. Yeah, well, kefir's yeah, probiotic rich source. So, so yeah, I, I never, you know, these are fruits I do not like except for yogurt. Um, See, that's that's the trouble when sauerkraut and most people don't like um, fermented fermented foods. They've got sure. a strong flavor, so not sure if it's. Helping or not, seems like it might be. What is your opinion of gut-induced anxiety and probiotics? 
so basically just the relationship of probiotics for anxiety. Is that what Well, one thing I, I can tell you that, you know, my daughter has trouble with anxiety and the more that her gut feels bad, the mm -hmm. more anxious she gets. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's like, a, you know, which one came first? Right, the, right. The gut or the anxiety or... Well, because, and you have a good point there too, of like, which, which one came first? Mm -hmm. Because um, yes, if we have bad gut health, that can cause a lot of mental health issues such as anxiety, mm -hmm. but also if we have a lot of stress and anxiety that can cause gut health right. or gut, right. gut um, imbalance is an issue. Yeah. So. I definitely think uh, with anxiety and such that it's something to explore. hundred I mean, percent. Yeah. Yep. So. Um, I have a lot of heartburn. What should I eat? Um <laughs> Does that really fall into that? Uh, it's not, not really. I mean, I can just answer in a general sense. Yeah, I mean, again, it's kind heartburn. Of clean, that's clean eating, clean eating. Right. Clean eating. Yeah, yeah, the processed stuff has got to go for that. Yep. That. Well, do you want me to ask another question? Sure. Yeah. Well, let's see here. I'm going to come up with something in a minute here. Yeah. Oh, it may redu reduce diarrhea. Uh, yes. Yeah. And there are actually um, targeted specific strains if you're experiencing things like either diarrhea or the other end constipation um, and specific. This is where supplementation can come in handy. If you have a chronic issue with that, you can buy a specific strain that's targeted and studied towards. Um, and I don't remember off the top of my head. It would be, a, you know, a search that you could do. But um, easy on the Internet. But for uh, sure. I, yeah. I would say the same as like with the weight loss. If you were heading up, down that, I think they had yes. one that was targeted geared towards 100%. that yeah so, yep a lot of them are words that you never heard of before i mean at least i haven't anyway so right right that's symbiotic on the market. oh yeah that's when it's a prebiotic and a probiotic together it's a, oh, symbi a okay. symbiotic yeah yeah what's the best one on the market yeah we still haven't thought of that yet right no <laughs> no i um in Honestly, with prebiotic supplementation, like if you just take your probiotic um, and eat a really good, healthy diet with it, with you're going to get enough prebiotics. Sure. Um, prebiotics, I guess I could just take a side tangent on that because it might bring up some questions for people. But I mean, prebiotics are a type of fiber, but the most heavily or the richest sources, I should say, of them are going to be onions, garlic, which a lot of people use in cooking. So those are two of the easiest ones. Um, what's the other one? I thought um, bananas. Bananas okay. green though, like on oh, the green greener bananas. side. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Um, uh, some berries, right? Yes. Yep. Those aren't like richest source, but asparagus is high. Oh. Um, Jerusalem artichoke, but I don't know what those are. <laughs> I've I don't never, know had I never had one. But if that's in anybody's culinary, uh, uh, whatever expertise, um, those are like always super high on the list. I've just never had them before. Yeah, I was so. trying to remember because I read last night and I was like, I felt pretty good because I had a couple of them that were prebiotic. Yep. You know, that, yep. That fit, fit within them. I thought it was something I have every day, but I didn't know it was green bananas. So, I mean, they don't have to be like where you can't peel them, but not, you know, ripe with brown spots on them. They're going to be as rich in prebiotics. Is there such a thing as consuming too much probiotics? What is generally the that's limit? That's actually a good question. So too much, um, it's probably, yeah, I mean, your gut will tell you if you've had too much. Um, there are some supplements out on the market that might give you a um, hundred billion um, you know, per <laughs> capsule. Um, that's pretty high. And that would be for treating something maybe like short term, like such as coming off a course of antibiotics or something like that. But um, I haven't read anything like you can't overdose on it. I don't think like you can. Um, I'm trying to think of this. I read though. I mean, you can have ones that are harmful to you. Oh I, yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I, so you got to be careful. And a lot of times, I do think you want to use someone that maybe a doctor or a nutritionist that would be um, to pick one out. Right, yeah, to pick one yeah, out. Yeah, right. for sure. And especially if you have some other medical issues. Um, right. Yeah, there can be too much of a good thing for sure. Mm -hmm. And sometimes if you have too many too, it can give you the same symptoms as not having enough sure. or, you know, the same type of digestive issues if you take um, too strong of one for yourself. Um, someone who had C. diff caused from antibiotics, what's, be what's the best probiotic to prevent future issues? 
been taking fluorester. I don't know what fluorester is. Um, uh, so I, they think they're looking for a specific. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Well, beer is fermented, so which is better, beer or sugary soda? <laughs> <laughs> Beer's more fun. Yeah, there, there we go. From Wisconsin girl. So. Yeah, I don't know that one. Okay. Um, by the way, probiotics can also help with inflammation. Yes. Correct. Yes. Um, and blood cholesterol. Mm-hmm. Uh, blood pressure. Oh, that one I didn't know. Yeah, it can cause moderate, re modest reductions in blood pressure. Uh, then we talk, you may enhance immune function. Mm -hmm. Yep. yep. Uh, skin health. Yep. Look at her. She's she's 50 years old. She looks, uh, how old are you, Jordan? 30. 30, okay. Yeah. Well, she looks good for 30. <laughs> yeah, anti-aging is yep. one of them. Yep. Ones too. So there are some good benefits, but uh, yeah, they, they even talked about COVID too, but. We don't know enough about that. To yeah, know yeah. That. and that's not a very fun topic to talk about. Anyway, right, so right. It's over-talked about. We'll keep it light. Yeah. Any other questions? You guys? Someone said they work out with him and his wife work out with Jordan's videos. Oh, every awesome. Day, she's um, very glad you did. Yeah, by the way, uh, Jordan does have videos on working out. Very awesome. Really a, uh, quite an array. I actually have to talk to her about a couple other ones we're going to ever do. Um, yeah. Someone just wants, you know, you talked about it earlier, kombucha and kimchi. Just talk about them. Yeah. So um, kimchi is, uh, I don't care for it, but <laughs> some people, it's a fermented like cabbage type thing. Have you had like it? Sauerkraut. Sauerkrautish, mm -hmm. but it has a little fishy flavor to me. It varies. Yeah. I don't know. That's been my experience with it. But yeah, that's a really good healthy source of probiotics. So if you like it, um, make sure um, going down that avenue, kimchi and like sauerkraut though, when you buy them raw in the refrigerated section, um, don't go and heat them up on your stove. When you get home, you kind of defeat the purpose. Um, probiotics aren't super heat, re heat resistant. Oh. So um, and I get that question a lot. Like, can I buy the raw stuff, but then heat it up to go put it on my brat? Like, no, don't do that. Um, you're really just taking away the benefits of sure. it so keeping it raw like a raw product um kombucha yeah that's the fermented tea we've been talking about um a couple times here throughout now um that you can buy in the store pretty much every store has it now it's more widely available or you can also brew your own at home why do you brew your own if you can it's buy cheaper it? is it a yeah it's a money saver mm -hmm. okay. by far i mean you'll spend a good solid three four bucks on a one bottle wow. glass bottle of it and you can, can you it, drink that cold cold yep okay. yep now isn't uh, some forms of cheese or am i wrong um probiotics i, thought Gouda? I don't know Gouda? i think i saw it read that maybe if they are i would i would venture to guess not a very rich source sure. like it might have a little bit um oh yeah miso miso yep japanese seasoning mm -hmm. Tem tempeh Tempeh, tempeh is another one. Fermented like tofu. Pickles. Oh, let's talk about pickles. Sure. Actually, because not all pickles. Oh. So it would need to be pickles that you find in the refrigerated section. And you would need to look at the ingredients. And if there's vinegar in it, they don't have probiotics. So there's a few, very few like companies out on the market. But if you go to the refrigerator and you can, you can actually tell by just visually looking at it, if there's probiotics, it'll be kind of cloudy in appearance. Right. Um, but if it has vinegar in the ingredients, they don't have probiotics in them. Oh yeah. Here's some type of cheese. Oh. Um, Gouda, mozzarella, cheddar, and cottage. Oh, cottage cheese. Yes. Yeah. That would make sense yes. to me. I didn't know about the other ones though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One wants to know is there a link to gut health and brain fog from suffering on a yearly basis getting worse? Any tips? Want to repeat that? So, yeah. it wants to know if there's a link between brain fog and gut, and gut health. Yes, absolutely. Um, so, without, I mean, like I mentioned at the beginning, if you kind of missed that at the beginning, but I mean, our brain lives in our gut, honestly, to be. Um, quite honest about that. So there's a big gut brain connection. And um, if your gut's not functioning properly, your brain can't function properly and 
form those proper connections, all that. Um, the other thing too, with brain fog, we're going to go back to the simple answer of just cleaning up your diet. Um, if you're having a ton of brain fog that could be due to a lot of blood sugar crashes during the day, which why do you get blood sugar crashes from eating, um, too many processed grains, sugars, all that kind of stuff. So somebody wants to know what if fermented foods bother my guts? Oh, yeah. You probably then take a supplement. Probably, I yeah. I would try um because I have heard that from people because they are a little bit acidic uh, um, fermented foods. So yeah, I would maybe experiment with a good quality probiotic supplement. A few questions about warm beverages helping the stomach or not. Mm. Uh, the question is about warm beverages helping the stomach. Yeah, warm or room temperature versus cold. I have read stuff on that because it's your body is doesn't have to uh, take it to the temperature of your body, sure. if you will, you know, taking it through that extra process it takes to um, warm it up from a cold state. But I mean, I guess it depends upon how sensitive you are. Sure. Uh, yeah, a few questions here. Does turmeric with a dash of pepper help the gut? Oh, I don't know about turmeric with gut health necessarily. Yeah. I know about turmeric for a lot of other things. Yeah, for an anti-inflammatory. Yeah, but... inflammation, which I guess if maybe if you have inflammation going on in the gut with, I, yeah, maybe. but I don't know specifically on the, how it relates to that. The thing about turmeric is you want to make sure, I want to say this because I made a mistake. You can put too much on your food. I, I didn't read how much you're supposed to use. And I was like, Dumping a bunch. Yeah. 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 And it, it can be terrible for you uh, on high levels like that. Yeah. Yeah. You got to be careful. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. so got to know what they should feed their 20 months old daughter. Probiotics? Well, so, uh, specific. Spe uh, like food or did they say? Just food. Just food? They're talking yeah. about what to feed <laughs> their 20 month Twenty month old, old daughter. daughter. What should I feed her? I know I feed her healthy foods that my wife and I eat, but what would you suggest for toddlers? Am I being too strict with her? For probiotics, are we talking? I think it's just food. Food in general? I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, a twenty month old should be eating the same as you, in my opinion. That's how I would feed kids because we're all human. So sure, as long as you're eating well. Ah, <laughs> uh, good point. Yeah. Yes, assuming. Assuming so here I well. found that part about uh, prebiotic fiber, and they also include oats, which I was happy because I do. Some oh oats. sure, I do bananas, berries. Is that what oh we Jerusalem were? artichoke? Yep. Yeah, asparagus you had mentioned. Oh dandelion greens. That's another like super high source. I don't know who eats those. Yeah, who eats those? I don't know. Oh Le leeks, leeks is the other one. Right. Onion garlic. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Well, I got some anyway. Yeah. But it's green bananas. I'm upset They're about just that. Gonna, well, <laughs> just a higher, going to have a higher concentration. I try to get green bananas, but I, you know, they turn right away. I, I know, know. I know. What is your professional opinion related to intermittent fasting and gut health? Oh, I like that one. So actually, um, I think that's great. There's a good connection between intermittent fasting and gut health. Um, so if you think about it, if you're constantly in a fed state, so eating all the time, your digestive system is constantly having to work. And just like your body needs sleep and rest, so does your digestive system. So in simple terms, um, honestly, just being able to give that digestive system a break for a little longer period of time to do a lot of healing, it's awesome tool. For so when health. you say intermittent fasting, this could be as simple as having your last meal at five o'clock at night and not eating until the next morning. Is Correct. That, yes. Yeah. So it doesn't need to be like a, a day of fasting. No, 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 no. Even there's even shown benefits. This is the bare minimum, but even doing like a 12 hour fast. So like your last meal is at eight and you don't eat breakfast until eight, like sure. something. Um, I know that sounds very simple, but imagine staying up until nine, 10 o'clock, you're snacking, and then you wake up and eat breakfast right yeah. away. So a lot of people aren't even getting that 12 hour overnight fast. That's again, the bare minimum, you're going to get better benefit out of like a 15 hour overnight fast. The other thing too, we could touch on too, is um, not constantly grazing all day long. Sure. Um, in order for a lot of those healing processes to go on in the gut, like three to four hours between your meals is really, or snacks is really optimal. So um, trying not to be that person who 
you know, is snacking while you're making dinner and then you eat dinner in an hour and then you get done with dinner and then half hour later you have dessert. It's just the constant, I think, more so in our society, we're constantly snacking, but having, you know, more set times is, is better for your gut. Is there anything to be said about the people trying to keep their blood sugars level by snacking? Like yes, that? but, you know, every three, three to four hours, I think is still optimal for keeping blood sugar balanced without you know, being in a fed state constantly every hour. Sure. Yeah. That's good. Yep. I, I, and I didn't know that. That's very good, good information. Mike's laughing over here. Or you got one here. What are good things to eat and drink if you have headaches all the time? I Sorry, don't, that's a, I don't think that fits with. Yeah, that might be stick, going off the tangent Yeah, we're going to stick with probiotics today. Does your poop indicate what's going on in your gut? Yes. Yes, it does. I don't know if we want to talk about poop on here, but yes, they're Google well, that. They, they do um, transplants now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I've you can get actual like does. visual pictures online and compare. But don't do it yourself. I, I, Transplanting? Yeah, yeah no. People, <laughs> no, seriously, people have oh, yeah. tried to do it yeah. themselves and don't. Oh, really? Well, I didn't know that. Yeah. Would you recommend the keto diet for gut health? Um... I don't see why not. I just don't know any specifics on. Yeah, I would, you know, the keto diet in some ways is similar to the FODMAP. Wouldn't you say, Mike, there's some, remember, the weren't they? Yeah, there was, um, there was some overlap between the two. Remember Dr. Westman talked about that? Well, yeah, eat more whole foods and less grains and processed stuff. So. Yeah. A lot of overlap and a lot of diets. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Start to break it down, so but. I, I think it's, it's certainly not a problem. Yeah, mm-hmm. I would agree. Now, on the FODMAP diet, too, we talked about this earlier for irritable bowel syndrome. Um, you do have to reintroduce a lot of these foods because uh, they do play a role in your gut health if you cut them all out. Yeah. So yep. Someone wanted to explain the transplanting. Of the transplant? The transplant? I know, I'm not an expert on I don't know any. I don't know anything I just, about that. It's it's supposed to help replace the bacteria, and mm -hmm. you take like a healthy person to put it in. Yeah, you home. take a healthy person's and you put it in an unhealthy person's. <laughs> uh, and by a doctor. I had a patient that was ninety some years old who had it done, and it worked great. I mean, he had it done at Mayo Clinic, so yeah, I yeah. I just don't do it at home. This just, just don't do it at home, right? And uh, yeah, I think there's um, even certain. Uh, countries where people have a better healthy gut than mm -hmm. Americans. Yeah. They could... Yep. I've heard a lot of stuff too of the people that you spend the most time around. You have some like similarities in your gut health. Too. Really? Like it, like most, most of your gut health is unique to you, but the people who you're like living with and sharing things with and all of that, like you because end up. Of the same foods you think? or just because I think it has a lot to do with just like maybe sharing a lot of the same things. I mean, yeah, food too, but I think it's a lot of like just the bacteria that you're getting. Oh, sure. Yeah, germs. That you're exposed to. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sure. Um, Oh, I don't know this one. Are there pro probiotics that are particularly good for the thyroid? I, I'm didn't, not sure see, on I didn't see any um, yeah. here that they talked about that. Like specific sure. strains. Right, right. That could be a search, but yeah, I don't I don't know on that yeah. one. Is red meat bad for gut health of the body? Uh, not in my opinion. That's a good question. Um, so the question was, is red meat bad for the gut health or the body? I guess what we could say with this one, though... Uh, um, so I'm a, I'm a red meat proponent as long as it's sustainably sourced. Um, so I think if you're choosing a good sustainable source, that's not injected with hormones and antibiotics and all of that, um, that can wreak havoc on your gut. I think it can be a, just a fine choice. Do you diet. limit it at all? Do I limit it? Yeah. Um, no, I don't really need to because I, I like so many other, I just rotate. I would sure. get sick of eating red meat if I ate it every day. Right. Do I feel that it would be a problem? Um, if I'm doing a good quality grass fed organic source, no, but I just don't because I like other things. So once a week, um, I, I probably uh, eat it twice a week. Okay. Yeah. Seven what? times a week. Well, there's my seven times a week with the red meat. Do you? Oh well, yeah. I love yeah. I, I really, I think. Honestly, I would argue in, in terms of meat, that's probably one of our more high, higher quality nutrient dense sources from yeah. what I know on it. All but. ruminant animals typically are. Mm -hmm. So, okay. 
Um, yeah, I know. There's so many probiotic brands. How do we find the right one? That's so true. Um, I typically don't go to Walmart or Target or your stores like that to buy a probiotic. I will start that in a general sense. They're going to be garbage. Um, go to Did you uh, more of a pharmacy, like pharmacy. Um, like I know the place I used to work did a ton of testing with their brands that they put on the shelves. Refrigerated ones are typically going to be a little bit better um, than non-refrigerated. Usually the companies that are using that um, know what they're doing and do their due diligence and research. Um, you really, if you, there's a company that you found out there, somebody told you about, you should be able to call them and ask them a lot of questions and they should have answers for you. Um some brands that I know do a pretty decent job since people seem to want brand names. <laughs> now I, I'll back up to that. Um, some that I've taken in the past, I don't currently take, but um, Garden of Life in the refrigerated section at like a health food store, they do a pretty good job with probiotic. I don't know if you've heard of that brand before. No. Um, I just um, uh, um, haven't um, taken any supplements. So. We came up with Garden of Life, and I know I, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not good at the brand at the brand thing. I didn't come prepared with that. Sure. I don't know if we are going to want to call out brands or not. So, um, here. anyways, probiotic and diet advice for microscopic colitis. Um, I don't know what the difference between microscopic colitis yeah, is and colitis either. is. Um, is the advice different than issues like irritable irritable ball, bowel syndrome? I would guess not, just because I think a lot of those issues seem to be kind of interconnected with one another. So I would tend to give the same type of advice there. Sure. Um, it looks like some probiotic strains may actually increase the risk of weight gain and obesity. What? Yeah. So I want to know the best milk to drink so it won't upset my stomach. The best milk to drink? Probably lactose intolerance. Yeah, I would say non-dairy. Probably at that. If if milk is upsetting your stomach, um, most of us are actually lactose intolerant. Um, by the way, on a side note here, um, I can't remember the percentage, but uh, most of us can't tolerate. Um, really? Especially non-fermented dairy products. Like milk is not fermented, but cheese and yogurt are fermented, um, and we a lot of times have a really hard time with that. So if your stomach is being upset. I wouldn't say there's a better kind of dairy milk. I would just go to a dairy-free milk alternative at that rate. Well, goat milk. Yeah, that would maybe be something to try. Mike was asking about goat milk. Yeah. Um, is ginger good for the gut? Um, it's supposed to be good, right? Yeah, yeah. I would just probably um, less is more to start because it's pretty strong. So, but yeah. I think you can take that as a supplement too. You can. You? Mm -hmm. you can do that for, um, like, have you heard of digestive enzymes before and taking that as a supplement? But ginger is a form of that. So it mm. helps with digestion. If you have trouble, like, after meals with indigestion, you can take ginger. I guess someone wants to know, like, regular yogurt versus Greek. It comes to, like, gut mm. stuff. I'm sure I, it's a difference. In terms of gut so health, no. It could be Either one might be fine depending on whether or not. Yes. Yogurt, though, what we could mention with both of those, making sure you look at sugar content, just like oh, the yes, exactly. conversation. Um, I always tell people with yogurt, just buy plain. Whether you're talking Greek yogurt or regular yogurt, buy plain and then add your own fruit in to flavor it because there's very few out there that aren't loaded with sugar. This is a weird question, but what do you think about cold rice as a prebiotic cold rice is not easy easily digested and a lot passes through to the end of the small intestine so they're talking about oh what's the word for it you can do this there's this um thing that forms when you cook rice or you cook um potatoes and then you leave them in the refrigerator for resistant at least a day. Starches? Resistant starch. That's what they're thinking of. Um, that has less of an impact like on your blood sugar. So you're actually better off eating like leftover rice or potatoes to lessen like the carbohydrate spike, blood sugar spike. Yeah, because both, both of them are very high glycemic, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. and they form this resistant starch that slows down the digestion. I don't know that this is the same as a prebiotic, but that's a different, different type of fiber formed. What's that? 
popcorn. Someone says I prefer kefir or film joke instead of yogurt. I don't know what film joke is. Film joke. No, that is either. No, no kefir is. is. So, um, yeah, here it says IBS, what we talked about. Mm -hmm. Can probiotics help or heal or to prevent ulcers in the stomach? I think that with ulcers now, aren't they considering that a form of bacteria also in the stomach? Like, yeah. Like so, I yeah, I think that's a question for your doctor. Yeah. So, it can help prevent and reduce cold and flu symptoms. Yeah, yep. So, I think of um, when people talk about what can I do to boost my immune health? Um, one of the first things I say, first of all, is making sure you get vitamin D in the winter months um, if you're not out in sunshine. But then my next conversation is honestly probiotics as a preventative. And then um, if you do end up coming down with something as well. So do you reduce your vitamin D intake during the summer then? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. If I'm outside, if it's, you know, we've got multiple cloudy days in a row, I might take vitamin D, but sure. I've actually already started to kind of back down because the sun is, sun is getting like, out. I was out yesterday a lot. and Yeah, you know, I just take it sporadically yeah. depending upon the weather and my time outside. So, sure. yep. So someone wants to know, do all yogurts actually contain probiotics or only certain brands? We talked about that earlier, so you want to repeat that? Yeah, yeah, I can repeat it. So do all um, yogurts contain probiotics? No. Um, so when yogurt is pasteurized, it kills off the probiotics. So unless a yogurt manufacturer is actually adding them back in, and it would stay on the label, live and active cultures, um, you can't just assume that it does. Live and active cultures is the phrase you're looking for. Correct. Yes. Okay. Well, I'm going to probably add some yogurt to my life again. I was eating some, but uh, I moved away from it. Mm -hmm. but, yep. So it also um, may help uh, eczema. Skin health. Yep. I mean, you know, we talked about skin health. Yep. And oh, so allergies that, too is something that oh, we, really? did, we did not cover, but I know a lot of um, good research out there too on probiotics and allergies and they do even list in here specific strains right. um so i would look that up if you're looking to treat something like allergies with probiotics i would go and do a do a search online um for which specific strains that you want to be um, targeting but yeah there's um definitely a connection there as well i just get the sense that you know in the, in the whole scheme of things we know so little <laughs> you oh, know that's so true and so true. and uh I think the, you know, 20 years from now, what we know about the gut and how, like you said, it's affecting your mental health and mm -hmm. whatever thought that. I want to know if frozen yogurt is good or bad. Um, I would say no. Frozen the question yogurt, is if frozen yogurt is it, good I mean, I think the amount of sugar in frozen yogurt is going to outweigh the benefits personally, but that's, yeah. Your gut is lined with trillions of bacteria. Yep. Wow. Like I said at the beginning, four and a half pounds it equates to. It's a lot of bacteria. And the other thing that can, we didn't really touch on this too too much, but um, we can do all these good things for our gut too, but there's a lot of other things that we need to be aware of that can influence our gut health beyond just what we're eating. Um, it can also be our environment that we're living in if we're exposed to a ton of toxins. So like we're using cleaning products that have a bunch of chemicals in them. That actually does directly impact the health of our gut. Um, if we're living a life of go, go, go and constant stress, that impacts our gut health. If we're not sleeping enough, that impacts our gut health. So there's a lot more than just food when we talk about gut health too. So, um, What about exercise? Oh, I'm sure there's going to be exercise is good for everything. Yeah. Is eating fruit worth it? Some say sugars are bad, but others say nutrients, vitamins, and fibers are good for immunity and your gut. It's a good question, actually. That is, yeah. And I think that relates enough to gut health to answer it. So is fruit good? I, I'm i a big proponent of fruit. I'm not... Um, I'm sure Mike would disagree with me, uh, keto over there. So if you're on the keto diet, of course, right. not for, but for just a general overall healthy balanced diet, um, I don't cut, I would never cut fruit out of somebody's diet because of the sugars in it. I think if that's your, if you're eating a bunch of fruit, you know, eight servings a day plus a bunch of sugar, yeah, we could have that conversation. But if you're eating a reasonable amount, a couple servings, two to three a day, um, I don't think it's ever. Uh, I think even. that's important to say because I, I did have a friend who just loved fruit and he had 
he gained so much weight from he, he would Extreme have like eight, amounts. Yeah, yeah. He would yeah. have like eight servings a day. And it depends too what your goals are. If you're if you're a sedentary person and your goal is weight loss, like you're gonna want to stick to lower sugar fruits, berries, and limit them. If you're a very active person and you're not trying to lose weight, um, you can have a few more servings you can get a day. By with more yeah. carbs. Yeah. Right. So is taking aspirin or an set every day bad for the gut? Yes. So do you want to repeat that? So yeah. Is taking aspirin or an NSAID every day bad for the gut? Yes, I said. In and simple terms. I don't really have yeah, a lot of... Ibuprofen. Yeah, it, yeah. There's a lot of discussion about that. Mm -hmm. And by the way, that's why you're supposed to take them with food when you do take them. Yeah. yeah. How bad are cigarettes for gut health? Uh, cigarettes are bad for... Yeah, for everything. Yeah. Stop smoking. <laughs> yeah. You, you could... I mean, I don't think there's anything bad in the world that isn't related to cigarettes. I mean, yeah, it just seems I, like yeah. it's amazing. Does the gut the, impact arthritis and inflammation? That's a good it, question. Yeah, there's a lot of impact. Uh, with, well, I'll say the question. Uh, how does arthritis impact the gut? Or, or vice, versa. vice versa? Gut health and basically arthritis. arthritis. So um, oh, poor, sure. poor gut health leads to... Um, Leaky gut, which which leads to inflammation in the body, yeah. which arthritis is an inflammatory disease. So there's complete it's connection. All there. connected. Yeah. Can't get away from eating well. No, no. <laughs> is CBD okay for gut? Is CBD okay for gut? I don't think there's enough. Yeah, information I don't know. Out there yet. I don't know on that one. Someone wants to know what leaky gut is. What leaky gut is? So. I feel like this could take me a while to explain, but I'll try to like simplify what leaky gut is, is so we have this um, like gut barrier um, is so to say that I'm trying to keep this in simple terms. Sure. It keeps um, bad bacteria out. So we get back bad bacteria in our body because we live in an environment full of toxins or maybe we choose to not make great choices in our food, but we healthy people will have this barrier to keep the bad stuff out, right? But what happens over time with constant exposure to poor food choices and environmental toxins and stress and all that, we can actually um, break down that protective barrier and these bad bacteria can get in. And that is what's referred to as leaky gut. And then that sounds alarm signals in the body and that causes inflammation when those go off. So it's basically just a breaking down of our protective bacteria. Oh, it's interesting because I, I heard that I thought the gut was leaking instead of things are leaking into yeah, it. Yeah, yep, yep. So uh, that's interesting. Well, well, we'll take a couple more questions if people have them. Uh, otherwise, we'll wrap it up here. Will the occasional drink of alcohol destroy gut health? Will the occasional drink of alcohol destroy gut health? I don't think define occasional, but I think <laughs> I think within reason um, and you're you know following a healthy lifestyle. I don't think that that's going to make or break your gut health. No, no, not at all. Is leaky gut permanent? Is leaky gut permanent? Mm -hmm. That's a good question, and not to my knowledge. I think that you can heal your gut, right. your gut lining. It seems yeah. like I'm just going to say, as an overall statement, the body has an amazing ability to heal itself. Oh yeah, no, I don't think that's so, a permanent. No. So I want to just you know going back to the alcohol. So if you're fasting, mm -hmm. and you're fasting from like six to six in the morning, if you have a drink at eight o'clock at night, is that considered fasting or not? No. Okay. That's a, no, the, the, yeah. That's so calories. anything, water. You can drink water when you're sure. fasting, but most, um, yeah. So you're, something with you're caloric. Yeah, that's gonna take you out of your fast. Mm -hmm. yeah. so. Yeah. They say under thirty calories, but it varies per person. Yeah. Mike's and, saying under thirty calories. And there's not gonna be any alcohol that's like under thirty calories. Five sure. calorie like electrolyte drink. Sure. Like, gotcha. Yeah. Um, someone wants to explain what irritable bowel disease is. Someone wants to explain what irritable bowel disease. I think that, that, that's a big unknown, isn't it? Yeah, so, I, don't, extent, I don't know if that's a simple, like, we can just define it here in no, three sentence type of I think type uh, of answer. they even have trouble diagnosing it sometimes yeah. because it's it's so tricky. Mm -hmm. so. And there's a lot of different terms and that fall under that category. And, like, again, what came first kind of thing. So it's a anything gut health. Yeah, like you said before, we just don't know enough about it yet. Yeah. But... I think one thing's for sure, 
following a good healthy diet and lifestyle is number one for it. So one more, or should we wrap it up? Uh, so on, I guess maybe this could be a quick answer. Uh, is organic apple cider vinegar good for gut health? Is organic apple cider vinegar good for gut health? Yeah. So actually, um, organic, um, like good source apple cider vinegar, vinegar. With, with so the mother? with the mother. Yep. So when you shake it up, it should look cloudy, not clear. Um, and it would also say with the mother on the label, um, Bragg's. Rags brand. That's one of the most common ones that you can find anywhere is a good source. And that um, has some probiotics in it. Very good. Do you know who Dr. Grundy is? Heard that name. Dr. They're wondering if he's good or not. I have no idea. Um, who that yeah, is. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks everybody for watching. And again, make sure you check out Jordan's fitness, uh, fitness videos. I'm yeah. trying to say <laughs> uh, very uh, excellent to follow. She's a very good fitness instructor. So, uh, We'll have her on again in, uh, uh, over a different topic. And thanks, everybody, for joining us. Thank you.